taught teenagers for years before I was a bit. Of course you did. So, yeah, you took each other without a mind, don't you? So I got to be cunning as well as. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our Wednesday Fellowship, lovely people. Welcome if you're joining us online. Um, uh, welcome to a nice dry room which survived the flood and didn't float away. You might like to have a look at the newly um, refurbished room across here instead of being full of all sorts and not very good is a, a nice new open space. So we're celebrating that uh, and you are very welcome. We're looking at um, some of the gifts God gives his people and today we're thinking about the gift of faith. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The prayer for today is the sixth week of Trinity. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I don't think I can follow a prayer like that, really. How wonderful. I'd like to read to you from Romans chapter 4, beginning at verse 19. 
is about Abraham. Without weakening in his faith, Abraham faced the fact that his body was good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words, it was credited to him, were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. So a wonderful passage amongst many about faith in the New Testament. Um, and we find the example of Abraham, who is one of the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11. And what can we learn about faith? Not much in a few minutes, but so encouraging to think about that wonderful gift. Mm. Starting at Sunday school, feeling afraid, I trust him. That's good enough, isn't it? Um, because uh, I love uh, services where we all ages get together because there are things that we who've been round the block a bit can learn from children who've not been messed up by the world as long as we have. And there are obviously things they can learn from us. But the faith of a small child is wonderful to behold, and God listens to that. I've also discovered down time, well, I can't find it in the Bible, that God listens to the prayers of a mother. Mm -hmm. um, because I've seen that happening. I've seen these guilty-looking men in the middle of their life. Something happens, and they say, Oh, my mother has been praying for me. <laughs> uh, uh, so Abraham is our father in the faith and Sarah is our mother in the faith and um, it's interesting Abraham says it, the, Paul says here Abraham believed that God had power to do what he had promised that's in verse 21 and I think that's the key to faith is like taking God at his word when you pray back to God what God has already said. You are on a sure winner. You know, when, when we have some things, well, I'm always a bit cautious about that. Well, if it's your will, God, but if not, you know, it's, it's giving ourselves a get out phrase, cause when we're praying. But when we're praying back to God, what God's already said, um, that's really encouraging. And when you persist in prayer, saying back to God, that's, that's really encouraging. That's exercising faith. Faith is uh, saying back to God what God, or claiming from God, what God has already said. Um, and uh, there are all sorts of different bits of faith. I can only mention a few, but I was thinking there's saving faith that is talked about here in Romans. When we put our trust in Jesus Christ, um, and we say, Lord, come into my life. We believe that he does that by his spirit. And we know from experience. I can remember when I became a Christian, when I was 18, um, and I didn't know, all, I wasn't, it, it wasn't quite a conventional way of loads of people around me to explain what happened. But the first thing I noticed was I suddenly got uncomfortable where when I was swearing, when I was comfortably swearing, because everybody around me was, mm -hmm. and I suddenly noticed that I felt uncomfortable, and I thought, what's happened? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I know I started praying and reading the Bible, but of course, 
God had come into me and the Holy Spirit was in my life and, and my conscience was awakened. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to that, that still is there in your life, prompting you. There's, and then there's individual faith in our daily walk with God. We pray and we trust God by faith every day. There are communities of faith. Here we are, a community of faith. We've gathered to worship, to celebrate in bread and wine, to sit down with one another and to pray together. And uh, God's people praying in holiness and unity and uh, with the, in the power of the Spirit and according to Scripture is a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, celebrating answers to prayer. Mm -hmm. We see that. And uh, then, you know, have you seen in the communion service, we say, this is the faith, on oh, the baptism service, sorry, we say, this is the faith of the church. This mm -hmm. is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The faith of the church is set out in the creeds. This is our inheritance of faith. Uh, which tells us faith is past, comes down through the church. We will in a minute say the Lord's Prayer together. When Christians first met in the very, very early church, they, it was like you were taught the Lord's Prayer uh, as your password to enter into this meeting in secret and saying the Lord's Prayer. When Christians have said the Lord's Prayer at communion, for 2,000 years, and I'd call that an inheritance of faith. Um, that is, that we we are, um, when you inherit something, I feel it's a blessing, but it's a responsibility. So we pray for our children, because our faith, our inheritance of faith is only one generation old. So I could think of lots more bits of faith, but those are my, that's my lot for this morning. Um, and I would say, faith is the gift of God, so keep on praying, be encouraged. Lord, we thank you for this gift of faith. Lord, we believe and trust in you. Would you help us to exercise our faith, to grow in faith? to be a community of faith and for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Speaking of which, we'll declare our faith. <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now uh, Chris is going to come and lead our prayers. Good morning. Well, I'm very excited 
for a number of reasons. First of all, for being here and hearing God's word today, but also because of what Jane said um, a week or so ago, and that is that we shall be singing next week uh, that wonderful song, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. I just want to read um, a, a few words as to why, for me, that's a wonderful hymn. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, evermore his praise should sing. I think that's fantastic. It's and all those things really are an epitome of why we're here celebrating the Lord's death. And it's because of that that we are who we are and we're here today. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for our fellowship here. We thank you for all those gathered with us. Some friends and some new friends. But Lord, we are conscious of the fact that not everyone is here who would normally be. Please bless them wherever they are, whatever they're doing. And please, look after Fred this morning, who uh, we understand has had an accident, oh. has had to go to hospital. Please, Lord, heal that wound and make it possible from, for him to join his friends afterwards mm. as they were going out for a lunch together. And Lord, please be with all those who are unwell. We think in our own church of Gary, our caretaker, mm. and of Reza, mm. and also of Ray Thomas, who's had a stroke and is confined to his flat. Mm. And, Lord, and now in a moment of quiet, let's just remember one person before God who we especially want healing to come. Father, we thank you for all these friends and we lift them before you now and ask that you would touch them and make them well. We're excited this morning for the future of our fellowship here, its growth and its effect on our community. We thank you for Helen, our new uh, community minister. And we pray for both Helen and uh, uh, Graham as they're out walking today but you know, we want 100% to back Helen and to support her in the work she's doing for we want this community to grow and Lord we want to make an impact for you not only to increase in numbers but to show and to share the love of Christ with everyone and Lord, we're excited too uh, for next Monday, but we approach next Monday, Lord, so-called Freedom Day, with caution. And I do pray now that we will always be mindful of those around us and show caution and respect to those who are closest to us. We pray that here in our fellowship on Wednesday, and also in church and wherever else we go during the week, we pray that we'll be mindful of other people. Keep us all safe and free from this, from this virus and from illness. And Lord, we've been hearing a lot this week about disrespect. Disrespect for those English, those England footballers. And we just pray, Lord, for respect for others. Lord, you showed us, Jesus, when you were here and taught that anyone who had seen you had seen the Father. We just pray, Lord, that we would be like Jesus. We would be an epitome of, of love in all its fullness. And showing love, we would be most of all respectful for other people and also against injustice, division, racism and inequality of any kind. Please help us to stand up for those values that Jesus loves and stands for. And finally, I'd just like to pray for Israel this morning. Not this time for any, any war or difficulty, but to pray 
for them as one of the country's leading countries in the world as far as vaccination goes and uh, um, keeping their numbers of, of uh, deaths and numbers of infection very low. But now they have another um, wave of the virus thanks to this uh, um, Delta uh, variant and uh, we do pray for them this morning and pray Lord that your people will be protected and kept safe. The government makes wise decisions. Lead them and lead our government too into the future, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Chris. Just a couple of bits of news. Um, one is um, we're going to do psalms for the summer and uh, there's one or two uh, psalms. If you've got a favourite psalm, um, you can add it to the suggestions. There's a red clipboard over here. The other bit uh, really is how do we go forward in our Wednesday group here? And um, I kind of come to some unilateral views because everybody marks away on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this is what we're going to do. Uh, it would be great to sing, but the evidence is that um, there is no difference between quiet singing, moderate singing, and speaking. So we'll sing, um, and we and I'd also like I'd invite you to wear masks all the time. I I really need you to do this because until Helen gets going, you really do need me, and I'm the one uh, uh, amongst others. I've got all the I haven't got a normal immune system. Uh, because of my stem cell transplant and uh, I've got all the shielding paperwork as I know others have and I need you to look after me so if you if you really value this um, that's the way forward for now so next week we're going to just do it like this because you know we need to we need more clarity we all feel as safe as we can feel doing it like this don't we so I think the best, I just think the best way is to carry on doing it like this with the addition of a hymn because I can't see looking at the evidence that saying the creed together, as we've just done, is any more risky than singing a hymn together. Um, but don't belt it out. <laughs> Does that sound all right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and we shall have cake. Ah. <laughs> So, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Hi, everyone. Peace be with you all. And we don't know the way ahead for the vaccine, but we know that uh, the vaccine program nationally, but we know that it will come to an end um, sometime um, and that the church will revert to being uh, the church layout. And when that happens, we'll go back upstairs um, and uh, have lots of space there um, to continue to grow. Yeah. Amen. So the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Amen. Father in heaven, hallowed Amen. be your name. Your Amen. kingdom come, your will be done on earth Amen. as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And so draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Maybe you'd like to take a moment to thank God for the gift of faith and ask God to grow that in you and in us. say together almighty god we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son jesus christ through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory amen the peace of god which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.